Do you ever see people talking about changing your energy to match the vibration of what it is that you want and you think, what are people talking about and how do I do that? This is going to be the only video you're ever going to need to watch in order to change your vibrations or hibrations, excuse the dad jokes, I'll do better next time, and actually start aligning with what it is that you want and stay to the very end because I will be doing an exercise that literally transformed my life in four weeks. So when everybody's talking about energy and matching the frequency, like what are people actually talking about? So Nikola Tesla actually said it best. He said, think of everything in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. So every single thing that we see in our reality, this chair that I'm sat on, this phone that you're watching this on, the table, it's hard to believe that at a microscopic level there is energy vibrating there. It's hard to believe that there's, the table is vibrating at a certain frequency, but it is. And ourselves, we actually surrounding us, we have an energetical field that's emitting out frequencies. And it's why sometimes when you're walking down the street, you may get a bad vibe from someone, or you may get a great vibe from someone at a coffee shop or wherever it is, because we're constantly emanating out that energy. And so how do you know where you're at on the scale? So this is the map of consciousness and all the way at the bottom is very low, 20 Hertz which is shame. And there's many different realities that can occur when you are vibrating at this level. There's shame, there's guilt, there's fear, there's the worst one I would say is apathy because apathy, with apathy comes a sense of entitlement. I think I was there for many, many years where I'd be like, well, I, I know everything, I've done everything, nothing works for me, so there's no point in trying, right? To get through apathy is to get through ego and the way to understand this is that our emotions have a frequency attached to them. Energy in emotion. And so you can really start to see when you are ascending from the lower end of the spectrum all the way up to that love, to that God tier level, to emanating out that high level of consciousness, there is a need to not judge where it is that you are. You may understand, okay, I'm feeling these levels of apathy, but in order to feel a level of love, how are you going to understand what love is when you have not experienced apathy or you not experienced hate? Each emotion brings a lesson that we can take on to the next level and we can use every single step in the journey to catapult us to the next level. And so the first step is not judging where you are and not being very critical of what it is that you're experiencing and just knowing that the fact that you've even experienced apathy, when you do experience joy, you can truly delve into that joy because there was a time when you didn't care whether you lived or died, right? And so this paradox of duality ends up serving us so that we can reach that God tier level, so that we can experience that freedom from desire, from jealousy, from anger, from hate, because we've experienced that darkness, we can then experience that light and understanding that time is non-linear, okay? So everything that you're experiencing now, no matter where you are on the scale, is going, is all interconnected. And I've said this before to many of my clients. I'm like, I look back on my journey, every single thing I've ever done has contributed to where I am today, to who I am today. If I had changed one single thing, if one tear, one less tear hadn't fallen, I wouldn't be who I am today. If I hadn't experienced that apathy, that hate, that fear, that um, guilt, that shame, I wouldn't experience the joy and the love and you know, the energy that I'm able to emanate on a daily basis. And so as we start to ascend our consciousness, we actually see that anger is the breakthrough. And a lot of the times in my videos, I say you have to get so sick and tired of your own shit. And this really is a factual statement because that anger, you can, is the break, it's like the breakthrough. You're so done of this apathy, of this misery, of this fear, of this guilt. You're so over it that you're ready to break through. And you take all of that anger and you transmute it and transcend that pain into your power and that becomes the breakthrough point so you can literally see the inflection point is anger that then goes into pride when we do continue to ascend you'll see that love is around the 500 frequency and so that's why 528 hertz is the most potent frequency the solfagia frequencies that you can listen to and so something that you can start to do immediately is start to go going to sleep with your 
five to eight hertz um, frequencies. Five to eight hertz is the miracle frequency. So what I would used to do, I still do to this day, is just listen to it all throughout the day, all throughout the night, say my affirmations to it, meditate to it. It's the most powerful frequency that there is. And you can just find that on YouTube. Now on top of this, shifting your vibration comes with focus. Okay, so here's an example. Let's say you're, there's two cliffs and there's a tightrope on from each side of the cliff, right? You have to get from one side of the cliff to the other. So you're walking along this tightrope. Are you walking along this tightrope and thinking, oh, I wonder if they've texted me. Oh, I wonder how much money's in my bank. Oh, I wonder if I'm gonna be able to afford my rent this month. No. You are walking along that tightrope one foot in front of the other because if you make one mistake, you're dying. You're falling and nobody wants that, okay? And so that's intense focus. And that's really what it is about understanding how to shift your vibration energetically. And Tony Robbins speaks about this when he talks about his incantations. And what I realized is when I was doing the Joe Dispenza meditation, I was essentially doing these incantations, not how he does, but I'm gonna put a clip up of what he does. So you can also include this in shifting your vibration in some way. I'd say God's wealth is circulating in my life. His wealth flows to me in avalanches of abundance. All my needs, desires, and goals are met instantaneously by infinite intelligence. For I'm one with God and God is everything. And this is not to say that robotic affirming doesn't work, because it does, okay? If you are changing your thinking, if you are focusing on what it is that you want, it's very hard for you to not start seeing that shift in your reality. Even if you are just robotically affirming, with no emotion, with no energy, it doesn't matter. But when you start to rampage it, when you start to say it with your chest, when you start to move your body, it's like walking along that tightrope. You cannot think of anything else other than one foot in front of the other. Has he text me? I don't give a fuck <laughs> because I need to keep, I need to get to the other side, right? You don't care anymore. So you need to start understanding when you start incorporating your body, when you start saying these incantations, saying these affirmations, like your life literally depends on it. Your brain can only focus on one thing at a time. It doesn't know the difference between real or imagined. And so I want to share with you the exact process that I did when I was doing the Joe Dispenza uh, breaking the habit of being yourself meditation every day for months. And it's a very physical meditation. Um, so yeah, just if you're gonna do this, I'm, I'm not gonna do a uh, like a guided meditation. I'm just gonna show you and then you can do it in your own time. So the Joe Dispenza meditation is a four week meditation. You have to read the book because in the book he gives you exercises on what to do on week one, week two, week three, and also understanding your mind, understanding how to break the habit of being yourself, understanding how you got to where you are today, right? And so week one is really about, okay, so week one is actually an induction, and it's like you put your arm in space, you put your eyes in space, you put the space between your eyes in space, you think about your head in space, and what this does, it's very long and drawn out. His incantation, uh, not incantation, sorry, his inductions are very long. They're like 25 minutes long, right? I think that's the big chunk of the meditation. But the key here is that you are becoming no one with nothing, nowhere. And when you are no one, nothing, nowhere, you can create everything. You're not Sally that's an accountant. You're not Dave that has three kids. You're not, you know, the divorcee of, you know, four kids or whatever, you're not, you're not that person anymore. You're, you're nobody. And this is the most powerful thing. And that's why the induction is so important because you're becoming nothing and no one and nowhere. So make sure when you do this meditation that you really delve into it. And initially I was like, oh, what's he talking about? Put my arm in space. But when you put this arm in space, right? You realize how insignificant you are, how tiny you are how nothing you truly are, but at the same time, every single thing on the planet, because you see how magnificent and how vast space is, and how you, this tiny arm, or your nose, or your eye, is just in space, and you're suddenly not so attached to this body, this person, this thing, this job, this money, this business, it's like, it doesn't mean anything anymore, right? So this is the key. So then the second week, he asks you 
to think about who is it that we are changing, right? Who is that person that sabotages? Who is that person that, you know, um, lets themselves down, that binge eats, that takes drugs, that masturbates, that, you know, can't hold down a job? Like, who is this person? Think about that person. Who are we changing? You need to understand who it is that you're changing. And so what I did in this week two part, I would imagine boxes, like wooden boxes in front of me, like a wall, right? And you remember the 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 uh, go-kart game, I think it was PS5 or some, the PS1 or something, and he was always on this buggy and he would like go through, Crash Bandicoot, it's Crash Bandicoot, that's it. And there was all these boxes and he would smash through the boxes and it would come up, right? The coins would come out. So in my mind, I would see these boxes, these wooden boxes. And when I'm smashing them, I would imagine it's like Crash Bandicoot and that there's things coming out. The old person is, person is dying, right? Me, I am dying. As, I'm, as I would do this week two, I would smash these boxes. Now, I'm really getting into it when I do this. Like, I'm smashing these boxes. I'm envisioning, bearing in mind you're in a meditation, so your eyes are closed. You're seeing these boxes, just like Crash Bandicoot, smash in front of your eyes. And that old person is dissolving, and you smash it. You move your arms. You stand up, and you stomp, and you refuse this person in your reality anymore, and you see these boxes crumbling in front of your eyes. And this is really where breaking the habit of being yourself comes in because these boxes that hold the old version of you is now dying on the floor in front of you okay and and also <laughs> i mean i'm out of breath it's embarrassing also you're move because you're moving your body because you're also you also have joe Dispenza in your ear saying you know think about her think about that person who is it what are you feeling and you've already done the exercise so you're then affirming it in your mind as well I am not this person or whatever it is. I can't remember, it's a long time ago. Um, but you're, you're smashing it to smithereens. You're allowing this person to die in front of your eyes, okay? We have to, we have to understand how imperative this part is. Now, then, the third week, he then starts to, to, we start to bring in the new person, and you've already done an exercise in the book on who this new person is, right? So then, in my mind, I would see these fresh new boxes laid out and I would start to build this person. And I'm saying it, I am kind, I am successful, I am this, I, you know, all of this stuff. I always get what I want. Everything always works out for me. I'm building this new box and you can literally stand up and do it because you're including movement into this, this, med this meditation, you're including your body. You, it's like walking that tightrope. You can't think of anything else because your mind is so focused on creating the new. You're then saying the new, creating this brand new energy. It becomes so real for you because you doing this, you're including movement and you're also including the meditation. And also, you've just done a 25 minute induction where you've put yourself into space and you're now nothing. So you're creating a brand new life. Even just doing that very small exercise, I am already, like my energy is already unmatched, right? So I'm already feeling that shift automatically. And I didn't even do the exercise properly. You have to go and read the book and do the meditation in order to fully immerse yourself in that exercise that I just gave you. It may not make sense if you haven't read the book, if you haven't done the meditation but I just wanted you to supercharge your, your shift, your change by doing this work. And then on the fourth week of the meditation, you see a scene that implies that the end is done, if that makes sense. I think, I think, that's, that, I think that's how it goes. I, essentially, the point is, is that you can do all of these exercises. You can turn around three times. You can stand on your head. It doesn't matter, right? Who are you being throughout the day? Who are you believing yourself to be throughout the day? I saw a video the other day of a girl who went into you know, this gym and she saw this gorgeous girl and she felt, oh my God, I feel a bit insecure. But instead of like feeling that insecurity, she went up to this gorgeous girl and she was also a gorgeous girl and just said, you look amazing. The other girl really appreciated that compliment. And so instead of falling into that misery pattern, that girl decided to become, a, become sunshine in someone else's life. And you have no idea what this person that looks like at the gym, who's unreal, whatever, you have no idea what they're thinking about themselves. And so instead of being in your own head, oh no, I'm not, I'm not good enough, this person's better than me, be that sunshine in other people's life. Raise your vibration by giving those compliments, by putting yourself out there, by 
doing things that you wouldn't normally do and experiencing life the way that it should be instead of being so focused on this shame, this guilt, this apathy, this, you know, this misery. Stop choosing to be miserable. It's a choice. Every second of the day when you are rotting in bed, you are choosing to do that. There's no one else doing forcing you to do that and I just wanted to let you know that there are still a few more packages for you to get before I completely shut down coaching and packages full time as we venture out into something new for House of Vibrations. You can use the code FLASH for a gift at checkout so I am taking on a few and then I'm shutting it down completely there will be no more one-to-ones. These are the final few thank you guys so 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 much for keeping me so busy and getting to experience this beautiful life. I'm so grateful for everyone. And in addition to that, um, I am in New York. Should I stay? I'm obsessed with this place. How do I live here? How do I move here immediately? Like, how do I live my New York dream immediately? It's, a, it's an insane, unbelievable, beautiful city, and I'm obsessed. So I want to live here, I want to move here, I want to stay here for a month or two. I don't what should I do? Comment down below, let me know what you guys think and you are worthy, you are loved, I love you and thank you.